Love them or hate them, heat pumps are here to stay. The fact that they take electrical energy and turn it into additional heat energy by extracting it from their surroundings makes them irresistible when you look at the UK's commitment to decarbonising heating. One of the key solutions to this shift is the installation of heat pumps. But when installing these systems, it's essential to consider the safety of the electrical setup. This brings us to a crucial element in electrical installations, residual current devices, or RCDs, and specifically the requirements and best practices for selecting the correct RCD for heat pump installations, ensuring both safety and compliance. But before we show you how to do that, if you're watching this video on any of our social media accounts, then click the link in the description to view it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD and you'll receive a certificate. If you're already watching it as part of that training package, then your name will ring out across the ages. The very first question is, does the heat pump you're connecting up require RCD protection at all? There's nothing in BS7671 that specifically states that a circuit feeding a heat pump needs protecting with an RCD. It's more likely that the cable feeding the heat pump requires an RCD for additional protection. You might think you could negate the need for this by running the supply cable along the surface of the wall or feeding it entirely in SWA cable and connecting the armoring to the earthing arrangement. However, in a lot of installations, that's just not practical and RCD protection will be required for your twin and CPC supply cable buried less than 50 mil deep in the wall. But there's more to heat pumps than just BS7671. BSEN IEC 60335 is a safety standard relating to household and similar electrical appliances. And part 2-40 of this document covers specific requirements for heat pumps. Within that document, we find this direction. The installation instructions for appliances that are intended to be permanently connected to fixed wiring and have a leakage current not exceeding 10 milliamps shall state that the installation of a residual current device having a rated residual operating current not exceeding 30 milliamps is advisable. So while this direction is aimed at manufacturers and not electricians, the heat pump makers will want to comply and therefore should recommend in their instructions that an RCD is used to protect the appliance. Therefore, you can't really design out the RCD protection. So if it is required, how do we make sure we've got the right one? Well, of course, we already know what an RCD is. A residual current device is designed to disconnect the electrical supply automatically if an imbalance is detected in the current flowing between the line and neutral conductors. This helps protect against electric shocks, insulation faults, and even potential fire hazards caused by persistent earth fault currents. While RCDs have been standard in most electrical setups for years, their application in heat pump installations requires careful consideration. Heat pumps, especially those with inverter systems, can produce AC leakage currents with complex frequency components. These systems often generate a mixture of alternating and direct currents, which traditional RCDs might not detect properly. For instance, type A RCDs are not designed to handle these complex current patterns, making them unsuitable for many heat pump setups. This is why choosing the right RCD type is critical. There are several types of RCDs, each designed to handle different current characteristics. Let's break down the main types that you may consider suitable for heat pumps. Type A RCD. This device is designed for alternating sinusoidal residual currents and residual pulsing DC up to 6 milliamps. However, it's not suitable for systems like heat pumps that have inverters that produce composite residual currents. Type F RCD. This type has the same tripping characteristics as Type A, but can also detect composite residual currents, even those with slowly rising or suddenly applied components. It's suitable for heat pumps that generate mixed AC and DC currents. Type B RCD. Offering the broadest protection, Type B RCDs can handle residual pulsating DC currents superimposed on smooth DC up to 10 milliamps. These are often required for heat pump installations with specific inverters. Selecting the correct RCD type isn't just about meeting regulations, it's about ensuring your installation functions smoothly without unnecessary tripping or safety risks. To help you select the correct RCD, the Heat Pump Association have produced this document, the Guidance on Residual Current Device Selection for Heat Pumps, made in association with NAPIT and the NIC EIC. In that document, we find this easy to follow four step process to get the right device. Step one, always check the manufacturer's instructions. If an RCD is required, the manufacturer will typically specify the type of RCD to use. Step two, determine if RCD protection is necessary. Not every heat pump circuit requires additional protection, particularly if the wiring system is designed with mechanical protection. Step three, if no information is available from the manufacturer, refer to the heat pump's operational characteristics. These details will help you select the correct RCD type from the options listed earlier. And step four, if you're still unsure, reach out to the manufacturer directly for more guidance on selecting the right RCD. 
But is this all a bit of fuss over nothing? Surely just bunging a type ACRCD in will do the job, right? Wrong! Type ACRCDs aren't sufficient for heat pumps because heat pump systems often produce high frequency electrical noise in DC components, which type ACRCDs are not designed to detect. And worse than that, the DC electricity that the heat pump may generate can blind the RCD. In fact, Regulation 531.3.3 of Amendment 2 to BS 7671 states, RCD type AC shall only be used to serve fixed equipment where it is known that the load current contains no DC components. So that restricts the use of type AC RCDs for any equipment that produces DC components, which includes most heat pumps. Using the wrong RCD for your heat pump can lead to unwanted tripping, meaning your system could shut down unexpectedly. It may also fail to operate correctly, especially if the inverter generates electrical noise that exceeds the threshold for a type A RCD. This is why choosing the correct type is essential for maintaining consistent performance. If the manufacturer's instructions don't specify an RCD type, don't worry, if you're still in doubt, contact the manufacturer directly. But in the absolute worst case scenario, if you have no idea which type to go for, plump for a Type B, like this one from CP and QDIS. For a long time, it felt like they were only available as wildly expensive, massive devices that took up four ways in a consumer unit. Now they're getting ever more compact. This one takes up two ways, is in fact double pole, and the cost of them is getting ever more reasonable. For more information, check out the resources from the Heat Pump Association and other professional bodies. So that's how to select the correct RCD for a heat pump. If you're watching on our training platform, then answer the multiple choice questions that follow and move on to the next video. If you're watching on one of our social media channels, then click the link to move over to the free training package and get yourself a certificate. Or you can watch the same video in the series right here or by clicking the link in the description below to find out just how we're supposed to connect up a three-phase RCD safely. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.